I think our sermon's already been done from my children's story. <laughs> but anyway, I'll do what I can do um, as best as I can. Our theme is God's faithful promise, unity in Christ, and compassion, compassionate care. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Open our eyes, O God, to the beauty of your word. May our lips and our lives unite to serve you. Amen. I hope you um, remember the three readings, but if not, I will do my best to bring it down, connecting them together. So these three scripture readings collectively highlight the overarching theme of God's faithful promise, the unity we find in Christ, and the compassionate care extended by Jesus. Firstly, God's faithful promise, as you've heard in Samuel's reading, God establishes his covenant with David, promising that his house and kingdom will endure forever. This promise points forward to the coming of Jesus, who is the ultimate fulfillment of his eternal covenant. And secondly, unity in Christ, in our reading Ephesians, Paul explains how Jesus has broken down the barriers between Jews and Gentiles, creating one new humanity. This, uni this unity is a key part of God's plan, demonstrating that through Christ, all people are reconciled and brought together as members of God's household. And we come to compassionate care. As you heard in the Gospel of Mark, we see Jesus' compassion for the crowds who are like sheep without shepherd. His actions of teaching, healing, and caring for the people reflect God's ongoing compassion and care for his, all his creation. So these three readings emphasizing that God is faithful to his promises, bringing unity and reconciliation through Christ and continually, continually showing compassion and care for his people. So this invites you and I to trust in God's promises, embrace the unity we have in Christ and rely on Jesus' compassionate care in our lives. But let us explore more to the connection within these three readings. So these three readings offer a cohesive narrative that highlights God's promise, unity in Christ, and Jesus' compassion. Firstly, <clears throat> excuse me, in our first reading, Samuel, again the reading recounts God's governance with David. God promises to establish David's house and kingdom forever. So the key elements are David's desire to build a house to God, David's desire to build a house for God, God's promise to establish David's lineage and kingdom, and the assurance that David's descendant will build a house for God's name. It is important to see that our ways are not God's ways, even if we mean well. But this passage promises a stable future for generations to come. And these narratives are reminders that God will always, always be seeking us. And secondly, on Ephesians, Paul addresses the Gentile believers emphasizing their inclusion in God's family through Christ. Again, the, uh, um, the key elements here, the reconciliation for Jews and Gentiles through Christ's death, the breaking down of the dividing wall of hostility, the formation of one new humanity making peace and reconciling both groups to God. The believers 
new identity as members of God's household. So Jesus came and proclaimed peace was a profoundly confronting teaching. It challenged the ancient understanding that heavily and trenched barriers were needed to keep Jews separate from Gentiles. That understanding continues in today's world where barriers of race, religion, and political still exert power. This passage offers a challenge to realize that there are many gifts in the unity of being one in Christ Jesus. As a follower of Christ today is that we have no excuse to put up racial and political dividers when dealing with others. We are not to think of ourselves as being superior to others or that we have more privilege than others. But instead, this passage invites you and I to see that because Jesus' love and sacrifice, we also must live in a way worthy of our calling. When we see someone facing difficulties, we are to offer consideration and kindness to the individual. Just as I mentioned last week, when being a prison chaplain, it's hard, but it's also a blessing to be there, to listen to them, for them to have someone to unload to. And we come to our gospel, Mark. Again, this passage depicts Jesus' ministry, highlighting his compassion and care for the people. The key elements. First, Jesus' invitation to his disciples to rest after their ministry. And then Jesus' compassion for the crowd, seeing them as sheep without a shepherd. Then Jesus' healing of the sick in Gensoret and the surrounding religion. So as Jesus and his disciples are seeking to restore their spiritual energy and strength by trying to find a place to rest, and I'm sure you would like that too when you are so tired of running around doing things for others, you need to rest. So they are interrupted by the crowds who saw where they were going and followed them there. Although seeking solitude, when Jesus stepped off the boat, his heart was filled with compassion and pity for the crowd. As in verse 34, like sheep without a shepherd. Then Jesus encounters a more demanding crowd of people who were incredibly insisted insisted in their demands of his time and energy. Again, in verse 30, 53 to 56. It seems these people wanted to use Jesus, begging him to give them healing. It's natural for us to want to come to Jesus with our needs. Yes, we come to Jesus with our needs, but... Imagine what it could have been like. We came to Jesus to bless him. There is a dangerous view that is held by some people in the community at large that the church exists only to serve people and that people have not duty back towards the church. Mm. The church is seldom seen unless they require a service such as a wedding, baptism, or a funeral. What should our response be in such circumstances? Jesus is the model of selfless giving. Can you and I be like, likewise? Can we be likewise? I have a question for you to ponder on. Ponder on this question. 
How can you show the importance of giving but not be exhausted in that giving? Ponder on it. How can you show the importance of giving but not be exhausted in that giving? Ponder on it. To conclude this connection on these readings, firstly, God's promise and fulfillment. Again, in Samuel, marks a promise to David about his descendant and the establishment of his kingdom. This covenant is seen as a foundational promise that leads to the coming of Christ, who is from David's lineage. And in Ephesians, Paul discussion how this promise is fulfilled in Christ, who brings together Jews and Gentiles into one new humanity establishing peace and unity. Secondly, unity and inclusion. Ephesians emphasizes the breaking down of barriers between Jews and Gentiles, creating a unified household of God. How wonderful. This theme of unity is rooted in the promise of David that his kingdom will have a lasting Impact, ultimately, unfulfillment in Christ. And in Mark's gospel, shows Jesus reaching out to all people, healing the sick, showing compassion to the crowds. His actions il illustrate the inclusive nature of God's kingdom, breaking down social and cultural barriers. And thirdly, compassion and leadership. In Samuel, David is portrayed as a shepherd king, caring for his people. This role is perfected in Jesus, who in Mark, Gospel Mark, is seen as the compassionate shepherd. Compassionate shepherd of the people, guiding and healing them. Jesus' compassion and care in Mark mirror the leadership and concern that God promises David's lineage will bring. Ultimately, fulfilled in Jesus. And lastly, rest and restoration. Mark highlights Jesus' concern for his disciples' need for rest, which parallels God's promise of peace and rest in his kingdom as seen in Samuel. The healing and restoration in Mark's gospel reflect the peace and unity described in Ephesians, where believers find rest and reconciliation. In who? In Christ. So these readings collectively underscore the continuity of God's plan from the Old Testament promise to David through the unity and peace brought by Christ to the compassionate ministry of Jesus, which breaks down barriers and brings restoration and healing to you and I. I repeat, brings down the barriers and brings restoration and healing to you and I. In the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Faithful God, we thank you for your promises, for the covenant you made with David, and for the fulfillment of that promise in Jesus Christ. We are grateful for your steadfast love, and faithfulness throughout the generations. Help us to trust in your promises and live in the assurance of your unfailing love. Amen.